What's going on, Dan K Show fans? It's a huge week. It's all Dan K, all Lucas J, NCDC selection time. We're going to have ourselves a draft. We're going to have some fun. And you know what? The only disappointing part about this draft is that Bill Belichick's dog is unfortunately not going to make a surprise appearance. But my golden retriever, Mattingly, is definitely going to find her way into a shot at some point during this thing. And with that, I go to a man even more loyal than my golden retriever, Mattingly. It's my left-hand man. It's my consigliere. But today, it is my rival in drafting two of the toughest teams to beat in junior hockey. It is Lucas Jones. What's going on, Lucas? Thanks, Dan. First of all, Bill Belichick's dog has Bill Belichick energy. I think that's the most amazing part of watching that dog because that dog is the dog version of Bill Belichick 110%. Nike Belichick is the name of that dog. I mean, that's, a, that's an athlete through and through. That dog is ready to go. And I can guarantee you that dog can pick out an obscure Division Three cornerback better than anybody come draft time. Absolutely. I feel like at that point, you just you just put like a couple of food bowls out. Whichever one the dog picks, that's the player you draft. Well, that is how we are going to be going through today. Well, not with it. Well, Mattingly might try to help me at some point. But we're going to be drafting the all Dan K and all Lucas J teams for the NCDC. Next week, we'll have the premiere. The week after this, we will the week after that, we will have the elite. So we will go week by week drafting our all Dan K and all Lucas J teams. Lucas, let's go through our criteria. When I pick a team, it's not always going to be your top scorer, your top guy. It's going to be guys for me that are going to aid the offensive game. And in net, I'm going to put guys in net that are going to stop pucks and bunches. Yeah, I feel like it's, it's sort of the same way over here is, you know, we're not, we're not just picking top down from the, the stat sheet. We're not just picking top down that way. We've watched all these players, Dan. We travel the country doing a lot of these NCDC games. Some of these were premier players that we've already seen. So we are familiar with these guys. We know their play styles. We know the way they play the game of hockey. And so we are really diving in deep to match these guys up, not just with us and how we would like to see the game of hockey played, but even in terms of their individual lines. We try to group guys together with people who we think they'll be successful with. Yeah, and that's exactly right. And that is why we are live here as we are, you know, quarantine, Lucas. During quarantine, what we find is improvisation, improvise, overcome, and adapt as, as folks are battling through the back. This is why I'm normally in Studio A. We're in Studio B this weekend. But, Lucas, to get the draft started, to get things underway, we are going to flip the coin. We are going to flip the draft coin for who gets first pick in the draft. We will each pick 12 folks. We will each pick seven defensemen. We will each pick three goaltenders. Then we will pick a head coach and a broadcaster for our hockey TV broadcasts. Lucas, heads or tails? Tails. Did the flip? It is tails, folks. It is tails. Tails never fails. It does not fail, Lucas. Lucas, that means you will pick first. You will start with your top three forwards. Well, I mean, this the top three forwards is always interesting for me, I think, because it's so much pressure, it feels like. That first pick of the draft – I would say that normally, not this year, Dan. I've had my eye on a couple of forwards who I think are incredible. With my first pick in the draft, I, I think you, you have to go Mickey Burns. And Mickey Burns is a player who was on my team last year as well. So this is a guy who I picked from last year. If this was a keeper league, I'd be sitting pretty on top of the league right now. Mickey Burns, he'll be joined by Nicholas Brett Schneider and a player that I was very, very happy to be able to get in the first round, Cy LeClaire. LeClaire is a guy who is just an incredible talent. He's an 0-2 from IHC, 22 goals, 33 assists, 55 points. Dan, you're disappointed, I can tell, in me grabbing Cy. The frustration on my end with that pick. I had Cy LeClaire teed up to lead my top line. This is a youngster with a big-time future who is a speedster and makes things happen. Cy LeClaire is also just a smart, smart, heady hockey player. Let's keep going, though. We move on to my top forward line. This is what we're all waiting for. And if you got Mickey, if you got a, hey, Mickey, you're so fine, you're so fine, you blow my mind, burns in him up, burns, I get Johnny Hockey Malera. Johnny Hockey, two-time All-Dan K team member, joins my squad again. This is a guy who was second in the lead in points, 
34 goals, 40 assists, five power play goals, second year in a row. Congratulations to Johnny. Then I'm going to go Andrew Kuropov, who I called the Russian Rocket all year. This guy, I've been calling him Andy since about three seconds ago. Andy Kuropov gets the number two spot. And then rounding out this line, that's going to score about nine bajillion goals. No trouble finding the back of the net for this guy. It's Nicholas Nemo. And Nemo, man, this guy can absolutely swim his way into the front of the net. Oh, Nemo's had such a good season. That's a, that's a disappointing pick because I didn't get him. But, uh, I mean, with the, the amount of numbers he's put up this year with the impact on the ice, absolute first-rounder. Next up, we go to our second line here for Team Dan K. And this is going to be an interesting line that I'm putting together. We talk about the all Dan K, all Lucas J teams. We're trying to build – this is a squad sometimes, the guys who have those different little moments throughout the season, those guys who we know personality-wise in this – forward line is going to be difficult to deal with this is tape to tape city these are some of the best passers in the game of hockey who are going to be creating for one another i've got liam mcclinsky from the jersey hitmen 40 assists for this young man talk about it 12 goals on the year half of his goals came on a power play so he's going to be good on the special teams then i got ian carpenter the all-star from the boston junior bruins and rounding out the line it's oh danny boy the gold pipes are calling Daniel Ibrahim, another hitman star. Daniel Ibrahim. It's like you knew that I was looking at his name on the list. That he's he's a really good skater. I had him. It was going to be on my second line. Now he's gone. Now I'm going to have to figure something else out. Well, go ahead. Try to figure it out. You've got your second forward line, your third forward line coming up next. Well, I think – I'm going to go with the guys that I know that I had here. The, the first person I want to pick is Christian Blomquist because this is a really solid skater who has just been incredibly consistent all season long. He's a natural leader. He really has an ability to pick up a team. Um, and I think he's going to get rounded out by a couple of guys who should be in the conversation. These are two skaters who, who are, are, had, had phenomenal seasons but somehow flew under some of the radars. Tommaso Alvera from the South Shore Kings, 28 goals, 26 assists. 54 points, and Everett Wardle from the Connecticut Junior Rangers. They're 299s with 50 or more points. Wardle's got 16 points on the power play. This is an effective line. This is a skilled line and an experienced line as well. That's a heck of a line you put together right there. You look at that group, and these are guys just with – they're not just talented, but they're leaders for all their squads. And, and that's going to be something for your team, Lucas, when you look at that second forward line. It's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, now we move to my third line here, Dan. And I want to start with a player who I've been excited with all season. He's a year 2000 from the Bandits. It's Jared Thomas, 23 points on the power play, 49 points on the season, 36 assists. And he's going to be sending a lot of assists to the other two guys on this line, Jin Lee and Frankie Ireland. This you can't take both of them. Line. I literally they are kidnapped. skating. They're skating on the man advantage. They're coming for you. You can't take them. That's just unfair. I did. It's ridiculous. Puck's on your side of the ice now, Dan. You know how I feel about Frankie Ireland. You don't need luck with that Irishman out there. Frankie Ireland gets it done. Jim Lee is an absolute take take the lunch pail work kind of guy, man. He puts the hard hat on. And he gets to work. Oh. Yeah, I mean, Jin Lee is one of the hardest skating players in the NCDC. One of the only players I've ever seen take five minutes worth of shift time all at once and not have any trouble with it. Jim Hankel always sings his praises, tells you how hard of a worker he is. I got to have him on my power play line. All right. I saw the way you went here, and now I got to get strategic. This third forward line, you know, I always talk about third line scoring and how important it is. Well, this third forward line is going to be my top power play unit as well and this is where I go I start with a two-time all Dan K team member this is second year in a row Zach Raybaum who's always bombing in the back of the net for the Northern Cyclones 25 goals 27 assists 52 points for Raybaum this year he's a top 10 point getter in the NCDC then I'm going to go a little different here I'm going to go outside the box right now Lucas and go to a place that I don't think you're thinking of number one here it's going to be the manhandler Kyle Mandler. This is a 22-goal, 15-assist guy. Big number I look at, 11 power play goals tied for the most in the league. Okay, tied for the most league in power play goals. So who should I put with them? How about the barnyard animal, man? The guy who comes up as big as a barn with the extra man. It's Greg Barnish from the Powell Junior Islanders. 10 goals, 31 assists on the season. Well, guess what? 19 of those 31 assists came on the power play that is the most in the NCDC. 
that's that's incredible. You combine the ability to feed teammates that Barnage has with just the complete player of Ray Bomb and Mandler really is the glue that holds that line together because he's such a utility player because he can do so many things well. I like that line. I'm jealous of that line, but I like that line a lot there, Dan. All right, I got to round out my forwards now. This is where it gets tough. So many deserving names, so many players you could throw out there, so many people to add to the list. I could have put Mr. The Vandalinder Industries out there. Mr. Brian Vandalinder didn't find a spot in my forward lines. I could have put a handful of other guys. I start with the Utica Junior Comets and Donnie Bogula. This guy, this guy ain't a new kid on the block. This guy is, this Donnie is an absolute Donnie Brook of a hockey player out there. He gets the job done. He fights hard every time out, and I can trust this guy with the puck on his stick. He's going to be joined. This is like the uh, the back-to-back -back Italian line here, Anthony Succo of the Boston Bandits. This is Succo to Borgula. Borgula back to Succo, and guess what? You're not going to be telegraphing any passes when Colin Graff of the Boston Junior Bruins joins this line. That's Colin Graff, Anthony Succo, and Donnie Borgula who line it out. And Colin Graff, this is an 0-2 with a big future. By the end of it all, I think this guy's going to be a three-time All-Dan K team member. I love that pick of Graff, too. You know, we've, we've sung the praise, I think, of Borgula and Succo. But, you know, Colin Graff has, has had another incredible season and he's a quick skater. You know, he can find the areas of the ice and he can get into these areas and really make some things happen. I'm, I'm a little jealous that pickup by Graf. I definitely had him on my list. But now let's go to my fourth forward line here, Dan. And this fourth forward line has a special place in my heart because it has two two-time winners of the All Lucas J team. Paul Breyer and Luke House are making a repeat trip to the All Lucas J locker room. These guys had another impact year. They're both, uh, they're, they're both really great players on their teams. I mean, Breyer with IHC, 46 points on the season, 33 assists, 13 goals. Luke House, 20 assists, 19 goals. These are two really balanced players. You know, Luke House has, is just huge. He's a huge guy. I remember the first time I met him, I interviewed him after a Rockets game. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go interview this guy. And as I kept walking down to the ice, he just kept getting taller and taller. But uh, these two guys are, are phenomenal players, and they're going to be joined by Patrick Marcinkiewicz. And I think this is a really great thing. I'm surprised he flew under the radar here because Marcinkiewicz, you know, you talk about not just having the skill set but also having the points to back it up. He's another great, complete player. You'll love to see him on your, uh, on your squad here, Dan. Yes, it's some great forwards coming out on both of these teams. Lucas, I think we're going to try to build this game into a Chell game in about a month or so. I think folks should keep an eye out. If you made the team, keep an eye out. We're going to try to see if we can put together a potential all Dan K v all Lucas J Chell matchup. Yeah, I think, uh, I think we can do it. I think we just have to dive in. We have to do the work and uh, get, some of these guys, uh, get some of these guys rated out. I do not envy when these guys see what we've rated them. <laughs> <laughs> because that never ends well, I feel like. Nope. I don't think we should show them what we've rated anybody, but they'll see how they perform out in the ice level. And speaking of performance on ice level, we're going to see some great performance from the Florida Junior Blades organization this year. Lucas and I had a chance to sit down with the coaching staff and owner of the Florida Junior Blades, Jason King, Rob Weingartner, and the rest of the staff from the Junior Blades. Join us next on the Dan K Show. What's going on, Dan K Show fans? It is a little break here in the action during our all Dan K NCDC team, and it is time to talk Florida Junior Blades. There's some new looks behind the bench right now, and we've got ourselves a king, some royalty working on the business side of the organization right now, and there are some big things brewing for the Florida Junior Blades organization. And with that, I go first to the the owner right here out in Michigan right now, the Michigander. We take a gander at Jason King. And, and Jason, you join this ownership group now, taking over the business side of the organization, working with the Florida yeah. Junior Blades. Can you tell, introduce some of the people to the Florida Junior Blades organization and tell us some of your plans for the team this year? Well, thank you very much for having us, number one. It's, uh, we're very excited. Uh, we're very excited for the upcoming season. Um, like, uh, like you mentioned, we are going to be, uh, we're going to be different this year. 
Um, we want to be, we want to bring the community into the bridge and get them involved. Uh, we hired the new coaching staff. Uh, they're bringing just a tremendous amount of uh, um, experience. Uh, we're really excited. Um, we really want to, we really want to work with these young men and uh, really take, you know, show them how to get to the next level, take them from, uh, you know, help them mature. And uh, so with all that being said, we're developing a uh, fantastic marketing strategy. We've hired uh, six, seven people for our marketing staff, uh, social media, um, you know, you name it, we got it. So um, the whole program is going to change and uh, we're for the better and we're really looking forward to it. I love it. And this is an organization with some of the best looks in the game. That Florida Junior Blades uniform is, is a great, sleek look. And now we go to the behind the bench <laughs> to a guy who's going to have a good look for his squad. And that's Rob Weingartner. And, folks, a little introduction to Rob. This is a guy with some great coaching pedigree and some great playing pedigree. And, and Coach, before we jumped on here, one of the things I talked about, it, unique hockey markets. And you are a guy who has played in unique hockey markets You've coached in unique hockey markets. And can you talk a little bit about the plans as a head coach in a, in a market like the Florida Junior Blades are playing? Yeah, sure. Again, uh, you know, thanks for having us. This is, uh, this is great. It's a, it's a big difference from uh, what I've experienced with the prior league I work with. So it's, it's nice to have this, uh, this kind of involvement with a league and, and teams uh, – like um, the biggest thing about the, the the markets. I mean, it started out when I was I left New York to go play hockey, and uh, I'm driving to Wichita, Kansas. Of course, we had you know pay phones back then. There was no cell phones. So when I tell my dad, my dad, you know, hey, I'm going to Wichita, Kansas to play hockey, he's going, what? Well, you know, what are you, you sure? You know, so we get there, and uh, it, it worked out well. We had we had a good team. We did we did well, and then and then like you said, I was I was able to move on. I, I kind of followed my coach Doug Shedden, who who went around. He went to Louisiana as well. And then when he left, I ended up going to Arkansas. Yeah, so you're right. I was in a, a lot of small markets, including when I was even in the IHL in, in, a, in a place like uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. You know, it's a, it's a small town, but it's a big hockey town. You know, the, the people care about it. And that was the, the biggest thing that, uh, that we learned from living in you know, or playing in, in smaller towns is uh, get the community involved, you know, you know get on their side and, and do your community service. And, uh, and they'll come watch it and they enjoy the, sh enjoy the game. Uh, Coach, we, we've got – your two guys behind the bench with you, Brian Jock and Ben Myers, who we're going to talk to in a minute. Can you talk a little bit, though, first about the style you're going to be bringing to the Florida Junior Blades on the ice, as well as what these two gentlemen bring in your mind? You know, it's always, it's always great to ask the individual, but everybody in hockey is so humble. We, I want to hear from Coach. Why would you bring these guys in, and, and what's the playing style to expect this year? Yeah, um, as, far, as far as the, you know, the staff alone, just th that alone, I, I've worked for, with the Wichita Junior team for the last uh, eight years, and I did everything from video camera to, to GM. So it's, it's, been a, it's been a great experience to have all this help, the support, you know, everyone, on, everyone uh, helping each other out, uh, no matter what the, the task is. So uh, that's been great. I, I actually didn't, I didn't hire Brian or Ben. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled with, with that they were hired. Uh, that was kind of the ownership uh, process. So um, once I, I, uh, I understood that Brian was going to come on with, uh, with his experience and background, um, it was great. And then we originally had Josh uh, Robinson, who had been a goalie coach for a while. And then uh, Ben's worked with him for a while. And then uh, ben, ben stepped up and, uh, and, and took the job as the goalie coach. So uh, as far as that goes, I, I just tell the goalies to stop the puck. We'll let the goalie coach uh, <laughs> figure the rest of that out. But uh, that's, that's his job to know the technical stuff. Mine, uh, mine not so much, but uh, – as far as in front of him, we'll 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 play we'll play uh, style hockey. You know, we're we're for or at least I was known for my work first. So we have we'll have a lot of strength. Play it play a hard working style that that uh, will promote these players to play college hockey. And now we go to Ben. You know, you always hear that Ben. I, I was a I was a baseball pitcher back in my day, back in the NCAA. I was a guy who went through the ranks that way and. I always say that I draw the comparison between a net miner and a baseball pitcher. It's the only position with a win or loss counted as a statistic. And, and you know, you, you get hung with that. Sometimes you can lose one. Oh, and, and you feel like you walked out a loser. And, and I mean, talk a little bit about the, the net mining game and, and what you're going to bring to the Florida junior blades between the pipes. Yeah. I mean, and like you said, you can, you can get hung out with a, a one nothing loss, but at the same time, it's uh, it's a team game. So um, I think the team always accepts something, you know, something like that. And just on the flip side, you you know, you could win, could win one nothing, but your D your D blocked a lot of shots. So it's you know, it, it, I believe in karma, and you know, what goes around comes around. And um, 
just be, being humble be, between the pipes. And, you know, big thing for me was always trying to stay even keel as possible, just being comfortable in the net. Um, for me, my approach to, you know, the guys coming in, it's, you know, you've, you've been playing long enough, you, you know, your game, you know, your style. I'm not going to try and change, you know, big things, but Hey, let me, you know, we have a great video program with the junior blade. So let, let's utilize this, this video program and see where we can make some tweaks and, and, and better your game and, you know, have you progressed long for this season. Now, Brian, I looked at you here on the bench, the associate head coach. It's obviously you're going to play a lot into the, the playing style of this team, the, the mantra of this team, and, and the personality of this team. Can you talk about what you're expecting out of a player who comes down to Florida to play for you and the Junior Blades along with Rob and Ben? What are you expecting out of a player? What type of personality? What should a player bring to the ice for you? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having us on. Um, love what you guys do. It's, uh, you know, being in the USPHL for a bit, uh, you know, being around and you guys uh, did a game last year I was, I was involved in. It was, uh, it was awesome. The, the boys love it. So uh, well done. Well done with what you're doing. But yeah, I mean, you know, being in Florida, it's, um, you know, accountability. I mean, you know, the, the, they got to come in and, um, you know, we, we can coach, they got to play. So it's, um, you know, coming in every, every day and, and, making sure that you're accountable for, for what we're expecting of you. And um, we want locker room guys too. Um, you know, they're, we want these guys to be together all the time and, and making sure that, you know, there's, there's definitely a brotherhood there and, um, and just bring it on and off the ice. So. Now, Jason, I jump back to you. What do you consider Sir. a win this season? I mean, obviously what's success? We always talk about it in the junior hockey game. It's easy to say, Hey, we win 21 straight, we're going to feel good. We end off with a championship, we're going to feel good. But what's a win right now for the Florida Junior Blades and what's success? A winning is uh, – that's obviously what we want to do is win. Uh, that's uh, A number one. Uh, we want to win on the ice. We want to win off the ice. Um, again, like I mentioned earlier, we want to we, – we really want these, these players – to uh, develop on and off the ice. Like uh, Coach Rob said, we want to get them ready for college. We want them all to go play college. We all want them to get that college education. And uh, that's a win as well. Um, that's, you know, we, are, we want to build that winning mentality in Florida. Uh, we have it, and uh, we just want to build onto it. So we're looking forward to bringing all these players in, developing them for a win-win situation. Now, Rob, I go back to you here. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to me a little bit about the obvious challenges of recruiting for a new team as a head coach? You jump over this new squad here. Can you talk about the challenges of recruiting during quarantine, during this COVID-19 pandemic right now? And also, how can a player reach Coach Weingartner? How can they get in touch with you about playing for the Florida Junior Blades? Yeah, it's, it's definitely been challenging. I think, you know, everyone's in the same boat, though, so we're not, we're not singular to this. So, uh, again, just like this conversation, the Zoom calls have been huge, uh, connecting with the parents, uh, the, the prior year uh, players. Um, I will say th this USPHL has been a lot easier to recruit than the prior league I worked in. You know, I get, I get, I get a, a lot of players reaching out to me as opposed to me reaching out to them on a, on a you know, a nonstop basis. So it's, uh, it's, it's definitely a, a credit to the league and uh, that's, it's, that's been a nice change, but yeah, it's been difficult. But uh, I think the biggest thing is getting on calls like this and, and, and getting a, putting a face to a name instead of just an email or, or, or just a phone call. So I think the zoom calls have actually, they've helped, um, you know, Brian, and I have been, we've been, we've looked at video of players, they send that on. So that seems to be a, a, a popular thing now. Um, we would much rather see them live. Um, I think we'd have a better idea what kind of players they're going to be. But uh, on the other hand, we, there's no choice right now, so we got to do what we got to do. So uh, I think it's I think it's going you know pretty well so far for for what we can expect. Um, hopefully things will open up in July and we'll uh, we'll get to see uh, actual hockey again. So that'd be great for all of us. That's a win for me. Let's play hockey. <laughs> we, we can't wait either, man. I, I'm finally getting back out on the golf course. I'm I'm happy again. I shot a nice little round yesterday. I think I forgot how to be bad at golf. It's been so long. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> now we go to we go to Ben here again. I, ben, I want to talk to you a little bit about. I feel like a netminder during all this, right? Without ice time, a netminder might be in the best place to continue to work on their game, to continue to benefit themselves. Can you talk a little about what should a goaltender be doing right now at home to better themselves? What are some things they could be working on? I think I think the big thing for goalies right now it's actually a great great time for them to be resting their hips and their body and and kind of really mentally and physically preparing for the season to come. 
Um, yeah, you're going to lose a little bit of on ice touch, but um, I think one thing younger goalies don't realize right now is how important it is to get the off ice um, conditioning going. So, you know, getting the flexibility, um, working on uh, just hand eye coordination with tennis balls and things like that. I mean, there's a lot you can be doing. Um, and I think just, you know, yoga and flexibility, all the, all these things that you kind of take for granted, or you think you might not have time during, during the season, that's something you can really focus on and you can actually kind of better prepare yourself going into the season. Love it. Now to close this thing out, I'm going to go to Brian here. Final question for you. What do you expect from your side out of the Florida junior blades this year? What is your, what are you putting success on? What are you saying is success? How do you describe that for your Florida junior blade set? Yeah. I mean, you know, coming into this, you know, fresh, um, you know, it's their, it's their 10 year anniversary here. And, um, you know, just being a, being a part of the staff is going to be great. Um, you know, everything's been been very smooth so far, and um, just excited to get the season going. Yeah, um, you know, definitely in December, being able to golf um, would be a, a plus thing. So, um, but uh, yeah, just you know, if we you know get going here and and get the boys on the ice and and, and really get to work, so um, definitely excited about getting down there and getting the season going. I'll tell you, you always got to twist Lucas and I's leg every year to get down to see the Florida teams in December. It is, it's tough getting us out of the building. I always yeah, I tell, I tell Richard and the crew at the USBHL, I'm like, guys, I don't know if I can do it this year. Meanwhile, I'm already on the plane texting them from the plane. So that's, that's how that works. But ladies and gentlemen, watching at home, if you're looking for a place to play, I can tell you the Florida Junior Blades, it's a great organization. It's incredible facilities. I mean, we got down there two years ago and checked the thing out. It's, it's only gotten better since. It's, it's a wonderful community. The hockey community there is something growing. I mean, you look at the state of Florida right now, a real good Panthers team, a Tampa Bay Lightning team that has taken over the city of Tampa. It, it's, it's a time right now in Florida where hockey is starting to take over. It's starting to leapfrog some of the sports down there. And it's a place where you don't only get the hockey experience, but you're not walking out of the rink in 18 inches of snow. You're walking out of the rink and you're heading to the beach in December and January. It's a great place. It's a wonderful place to play, a wonderful organization. Gentlemen, we thank you so much for joining us. If you want to find out more about the Florida Junior Blades, reach on out. Head over to USPHL.com as well. This is going to be a big year down in Florida for the Junior Blades. Welcome back. A great interview, a great chance to talk with the Florida Junior Blades. And I'll tell you, it is always difficult using this Zoom. We're in a new world right now, this social distance broadcasting. We thank everyone for working along with us, watching along with us on these Zoom broadcasts, on these internet-laden broadcasts. Man, we're all over the world, Lucas, doing these things. Yeah, it's, it's presented a lot of new challenges, especially on the technical director side. You know, you're, you're fiddling with trying to get some lighting in a, a room you've never lit before. You're, you know, I'm, a, I'm an audio guy, so the fact that we're getting all this different audio is, it hurts my soul. But we do it for the folks at home, Dan. Oh, I can't wait. But something that doesn't hurt my soul is the defensive position, man. It's defenseman time for the Dan K show, all Dan K, all Lucas J teams, NCDC level. Dan K gets first pick. And normally Dan K is a forward guy. He's a scoring guy. But guess what? This time he goes to two of his favorite defensemen in the league. Both of these guys, Lucas making the all-Dan K team for the second year in a row. That's Devin Kasparik, who's a two-time NCDC All-Star, and Bryce DeFazio. The Bryce is right, and Bryce hits the ice. Oh, that, that Bryce DeFazio pick is a great one. I mean, you we just had the USPHL uh, get into some sharing clips, and one of the clips I know I shared with you was his hat trick when we when we did his uh, one of his games this season, and, and he's just been somebody who has really progressed well. He's added a lot of skills to his skill set. But, Dan, I've got some guys who I think have quite a bit of skills on their own front to be able to bring. My first defensive line, Connor Sullivan, Lewis Lidner. Now, Connor Sullivan is the top point getter for defensemen in, uh, in the NCDC. Seven goals, 38 assists, 45 points, 19 points on the power play. He is both the point and assist leader, so I had to take him. He's a, he's a 2,000, but right underneath him, is a 2001 in his first season in the NCDC, Lewis Linder with the Junior Bruins in just 39 games played, had 42 points, lowest penalty minutes of any defenseman that qualifies, and is the only qualified defenseman above one point per game, Dan. So and this is the best Luis since Mendoza right here, Lucas, with mm -hmm. the Mighty Ducks. 
<laughs> this it's an incredible it's an incredible stat line for a guy like that. He's an 0-1. He's got more time. I can't wait to see where this player progresses. And that's a great D pair to start things off. I can only I can only imagine what D pair number two looks like. Yeah, well, D pair two, I'm also really excited about. You know, I've got Blake Coleman as my my first defensive pick here. You know, he he kind of moved a little bit. Started with South Shore Kings, ended with IHC, and I think the the difference is why I chose him because he left the South Shore Kings after a few games, only had one assist. Then when he moved to the Islanders Hockey Club, in his next 36 games, put up 28 points. So something clicked. We talk about you have to find the right fit. Blake Coleman has found the right fit with the Islanders Hockey Club. And now, Dan, someone who I got a chance to know during the All-Star game because he was a subject of our Dan K show, All-Star game behind the scenes, Mr. Reed Miller of the Connecticut Junior Rangers is my second pick on the second line. That's a great, great pair right there. And Reed Miller is a heady player out of Arizona who plays Arizona hot right there, man. He's all over the place, all over the ice. The amount that Coach Hankel and the Connecticut Junior Rangers have leaned on him throughout his playing career this is a guy who makes things happen. And Blake Coleman, that's an, that's an easy pick any time out. Speaking of easy picks, let's go to my second D pair. And it's this situation, what do I like to do, Lucas? What do I like to see? Offense. Offense. I like goals. And what do I want out of my second D pair here? These are the guys, after Kasparik and DeFazio go out there and shut you down, I want the guys that can get involved a bit offensively now. I want to come out, take some chances, get high up on the ice, and see what I can do. How about Roman Lednev of the Cyclones, the leading goal scorer for all defensemen in the NCDC? And then how about a 30 assist getter in Kevin Sadowski of the Utica Junior Comets? Sadowski and Lednev, this is a situation where I'm going to let these guys go. And the one reason why I know I can trust these two getting offensive together, Lednev, man, he comes from that Flanagan that Flanagan program. He's going to block shots. He's going to get back involved. He's going to do what he has to do. And Roman Lednev, man, all roads – lead to the back of the net for this Roman. And that's how he's gotten it done. That was a really cool line by me. <laughs> I'll give you credit where credit is due on that one, Dan. And you got to give credit to Lednev and the Cyclones because your, your first instinct as a defenseman from the Cyclones, they're not offensive-minded. These are defensive-minded guys. But that just means that Roman's the complete package. He's got the offensive mindset. He's got the defensive mindset. He'll block a puck and then he'll fire it in the back of the net. Love it. And we move to my next D pair. We're going to have one extra defenseman for each side to get seven D men in there. You don't want to – we never want to shortchange the defenseman, Lucas, and that's what we're doing. So we're going to have seven total defensemen here on these squads. Next two D men, I'm going to go to the Boston Junior Bruins. And, you know, you want to talk about systems play. You want to know about guys who know how to play where they need to be. You want to talk about controlled – defense, controlled skating, and intelligent hockey. You talk about Michael Brown, and I would always say during broadcasts, what can Brown do for you? Well, Michael Brown can do it all, and, and he's delivered time in and time again, time in and time out every time, making up new sayings, Dan K, totally going for it. And then finally, my next D man, it's going to be Nicholas Chioka, the Jersey Hitman. Chioka and Brown, and Chioka, man, this is a guy who can absolutely Chioka an offensive side. Get it? Like choke, like, you know, like take away the ability to breathe for an offensive player. No? No, it's Darn a bit it. of a stretch. <laughs> ah, I did my best. I did my best. They can't all be winners. <laughs> Blowing the whistle on that, but these are it's another another couple of great picks from you there, Dan. You got uh, Michael Brown, Nicholas Chioka. You know, it's it's one of those things where you hear the names on the broadcast, you know they're doing something, and that's why I love getting to pick these defensemen because the stats are so hard for defensemen. And we've talked about a year in and year out where the stats don't represent what kind of player they are sometimes, and it's it's great to be able to watch these guys and then really kind of dive into the game. Yeah, and now, Lucas, let's see your third D pair and then your extra D man. Let's see that right now. So my third D pair, Cam Speck, Tyler Borsch. These are two defensemen who I think have, have really have something special going on. You know, Tyler Borsch is a year 2000 from the Hitmen. He is not messing around out there, man. He is a defenseman. He's a defenseman's defenseman. Borsch is laying the body. He's creating chaos in the corners. He really does it all when he's out there on the ice. And then you look at, at kind of another type of defenseman in Cam Speck, a 99 from the New Hampshire Monarchs. He's a team captain. He's a team's leader. He's the heart and soul of that squad. You talk to anyone up in New Hampshire, Speck is out there. He's, he's, getting, he's putting in the work. He's getting the guys motivated. And he's a defenseman who can also feed the puck. He's a great glue line presence. Speaking of a great presence, my floating defenseman, Dan, is going to be Paul Leto 
a rookie 01 from the Rockets Hockey Club. Two goals, 13 assists, 15 points. But he's a young skater, his first year in the NCDC. The ceiling on Leto is so high that I don't even think you could reach it. Luke <laughs> couldn't even reach the ceiling on how high Paul Leto is. Hey, he really does a great job, man. Leto does not Leto you down at any point. Boom! I'm back on the horse. Now we go to <laughs> my final defenseman before we head to the netminders and we head between the pipes. I'm going to go with Adam Svensson. And Svensson with the Twin City Thunder was a guy that they heavily relied on on the power play. Nine power play assists, one power play goal. And playing up in Twin City, this is a guy that in front of big crowds, in front of some fun environments, really held his own, really stayed calm, calm, cool, and collected. If you're going to have that roving defenseman, you're going to have the guy that's there in case of an injury to fill in that spot. Svensson is the kind of mentality, the kind of mindset that I'm looking for in that role. So Adam Svensson rounds out my defenseman. Uh, a couple of a couple of great last minute defensemen there, Dan. And uh, tell you what, I say it every year. We played this game. This game would be fun. We're gonna see about that. We're gonna try to get this thing done. Try to get that old Dan K versus all Lucas J. We'll keep you posted on it. But before then, we need to round this thing out. We need the goaltenders. We need the coaches. We need the broadcasters that are doing this thing. So first up, let's go to the goalie position. Lucas, you get first dibs after winning that coin toss. Well, I'm happy that I won that coin toss, Dan, because my first pick in the goaltenders is a goaltender who has faced the most shots, is a goaltender who has the most wins, and a goaltender who, if this, things had not stopped when they stopped, might have been fighting for the whole gosh darn thing. It's Thomas Gale from the Boston Junior Bruins. Uh, I mean, Thomas Gale, you can't go wrong with Thomas Gale. 1,471 shots faced, won 10 more games than the second most wins by any netminder. The, you want to talk about leaning on a goaltender. The Junior Bruins leaned heavily on Thomas Gale all season long. He was in net 41 of 50 games for this Boston Junior Bruins side. Always calm, cool, and collected. A great interview off and on the ice as well, and he was never – ever out of any game he was in it I did not watch one game where Thomas Gale did not bring his a game a 935 stage percentage which is the second most by any qual second highest by any qualified net in the NCDC and he faced the most shots and played the most games yeah the, you, you can't go wrong with Thomas Gale he, he was an absolute force in net this season speaking of forces in net let's go to Dan Kay's side of things and I started off with a netminder that if it wasn't for a slight little injury bug in the middle of the season, could have had even more wins than he did. If it wasn't for five overtime losses, which, it, you know, it's a bounce of a puck sometimes, he could have been in the 20s when it comes to wins. This is Tate Brandon, the most difficult name to say on a live broadcast because you always want to say Brandon Tate. But it's Tate Brandon of the Connecticut Junior Rangers who gets the start for me, 19-4-5-0, a 2-1-5 goals against average, a league leading 942 saves percentage this young man was not good he was not great he was not excellent he was stellar he was say incroyable in that Tate Brandon has made so many saves but not as many saves as we've had to make in the broadcast booth when we get his name wrong and call him Brandon Tate the amount of times I would correct you and then get it wrong right after that it's amazing <laughs> <laughs> we keep moving, though. I get my second net minor, and I'm going to surprise everyone here. I really could have gone Gavin Avery. Second most wins in the league, 22-2-1-1, 1.97 goals against, three shutouts, 93-1 saves percentage, three shutouts on the year. Could have put that out there. Could have picked Gavin Avery. I'm going with Jake the Snake here. I'm going Jacob Zakarowicz of the Islanders Hockey Club. How about 13, 5, 1, and 1 under the radar alongside an all-star goaltender? There was another all-star goaltender in IHC. This guy went with a 2.43 goals against, a 9.30 saves percentage, and guess what? In limited time, led the league in shutouts with four. That is, yeah. I mean, you, so you talk about stats. You talk about the types of things that, that they can use to get it done. I mean, the, the skill set there is absolutely incredible, Dan. Great pick. Great pick by me. Speaking of great picks, let's get two more goaltenders from Lucas. So my second pick for goaltender is a man who was just dominant. You know, there, there are, so you could use words, you could use superlatives, but I think what I'm just going to say is he was just another A brick in the wall, Dan. And ah, that was very my nice. save call very for nice. him. Gavin Abrick of the Jersey Hitman, 22-2-1-1. One, 
under two goals a game average, a couple of shutouts, a 931 save percentage, the anchor of that Jersey Hitmen dominant season they had this year. An incredible year for Gavin Abrick. You cannot say enough about how good this young man was. And the only reason why I went and picked Zakara, which here was just because I love that unsung hero in net, right? You see that, that unsung hero, that guy who might have gone under the radar a little bit. Abrick, this guy was shut down in the All-Star game. He was shut down all season long. There was not a person in the world that could score off Gavin Abrick. And for my third pick here, Dan, I'm going with Henry Graham of the Powell Junior Islanders. And there was something special that happened on the Powell Junior Islanders in terms of their net minding this year. This is a team that we made the trek out to Long Island a few times this year to watch. And their goaltending and their defense was so good game after game. And I think Henry Graham is a huge part of that. You know, 11 6 one and one 2.85 goals against, a .92 saves percentage. You cannot put a price on a goaltender like Henry Graham, who every time he goes out there, you know it's going to be consistent. You know he's going to work hard. You know he's going to make the big save. You stole this guy from me. <laughs> you stole Henry Graham from me. This was my pick. This was my guy all year long. Henry Graham out the window. So guess what I got to do? I got to go to where, you know, where the bread is butter. Go to the, uh, go to the USPHL's version of Henrik Lundqvist. Go to the Swede. When in doubt, get a Swedish netminder is always my rule. And I go to Cali Anderson, who I can always call on to make a big play in net, to make a big stop. Cali Anderson, two-time all Dan K netminder, back-to-back years. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't go wrong with Callie Anderson there. Another great season from him. Nice pick up there last year, Dan. Again, if we were doing a keeper league, I feel like we'd both be just as competitive if we if this were a keeper sort of fantasy league. Exactly right. Now we go, Lucas, into our final picks before this thing all closes out. We're going to pick our head coaches for the All-Dan K and All-Lucas J team, as well as our broadcaster. I will take first pick this go-around, first pick for – head coaches, and I got to go, you know, I could have easily gone Toby Harris, could have easily gone that way, but I'm going to try to go with the same thing I've been doing so far, some of those unsung heroes here, and one of the guys who had such an interesting year, coaching both the Premier and the NCDC for the Islanders Hockey Club, coached a Premier team that at one point won 20-plus consecutive games at the Premier level, then a team at the NCDC level that was one of the youngest squads in all the land, some of the youngest, speediest talent, and he took these guys from a slow start to a strong finish. They would have had a first-round playoff series at home if the playoffs were actually played. They got a fourth seed. It's Coach K. It's Tim Kirkostas, an absolute favorite of the Dan K show, and the only coach to win and be chosen for the all-Dan K team in both the Premier and the NCDC. He's picked last year as my Premier coach, this year as my NCDC coach. Well, Dan, I, I really can't argue with that. Coach K has done a phenomenal job this season. What he did with the Islanders Hockey Club premier team, especially winning his first 22 games uh, was Correct. just just a heck of a run and something that won't easily be repeated. And now we go over to a coach who also made the jump from the premier and the NCDC because I am taking the only man in the NCDC – to GM a trade for toilet paper in the offseason. It's Coach Ryan Frew. That's the man right there. That is the man. And Ryan Frew is a guy, that's a personality you love as a player. You love to play for a guy like Ryan Frew. He's got that blue-collar attitude. He understands the game so well. This is a guy with an A-plus mind and that D-minus attitude, right? It, it's that guy who can kind of, he can have fun off the ice. He can have fun on the ice. But he also knows the X's and O's so well. And it, it's Honestly, talk about the New England region. It's that Bill Belichick mentality, right? It's that idea. It's no nonsense at times and then the nothing but nonsense at other times. I mean, and that's what you love to see from a coach. It's what you love to play for. Ryan Frew's incredible, incredible selection. Yeah, thank you, Dan. I think, uh, I think Ryan will, will certainly be happy to hear that. I can't wait to be up in New Hampshire again. I know we've talked at length about how welcoming that team is. On a more practical note, I am almost out of syrup. And I've been spoiled. I can only, only eat New Hampshire Monarch syrup now. I refuse to settle for anything that can be purchased in a grocery store. We need more syrup, but what we need first is your broadcaster. Who's broadcasting for you on Hockey TV? Well, I thought about it, and I wanted to go for somebody that, you know, we had, we had sort of had some really nice experiences with. You know, we always love when broadcasters are welcoming, you know, 
we come into these rinks and a lot of these NCD, all these NCDC teams have broadcasters and we like talking to these guys and getting the lay of the land, asking them, you know, Ed, tell us about your camera operators, the rink, how hard is it to get to the bench? Tell us about some of the players on your team. And, and this guy, I think particularly left an imprint on me and I know Dan as well for his hospitality and his skill on the mic in the broadcast booth game after game. It's Brian Rascona of the PAL Junior Islanders. That setup they have over there is great. And Brian's voice lends an extra sense of professionalism to an already great broadcast. That's such a beautiful rink setup up there. Such a beautiful broadcast. The work they do behind the scenes. Brian and us, I mean, we did the quickest broadcast setup in history along with their team up there. That was a seven-minute broadcast setup before a puck drop to get a game on the air for the PAL Junior Islanders. So we've done it all. Brian Rascona is an absolute beauty on and off the ice, on the mic there. Great pick by Lucas. My pick last year was Alex Thomas. Alex Thomas is also the GM of the all Dan K team. So to be fair, I'm not going to pick Alex Thomas again. I do love Alex Thomas, though. I love me some Alex Thomas. Alex, we love you out there. Congrats on your new gig with the Northern Cyclones. I'm going to go to the home of Dan K, Wayne, New Jersey. And I'm going to go a nice little 10-mile trek down the road from my 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 home digs there. And I'm going to go to a man named Brett Luthner, who took over the booth in Jersey for the Jersey Hitman. This is a team that finished first in the league on the ice. And you know what? At times they were finishing first in the league on the broadcast as well, because Brett Luthner always does an incredible job. Yeah. I mean, the, the Hitman broadcasts are top notch as well. That whole control room is so oh. great. And, you know, and it's, it's funny because our two broadcasters have great media teams backing them up. And I think it, it goes hand in hand that the broadcaster is never worried. And the broadcaster is never distracted when he knows that there are great media people behind them. You know, that's, that's really what it comes down to, that, you know, the, these two broadcasters have great media people behind them. They're great in their own right. This would be a fun game to have both of them on the mic at the same time. Lucas, I can't wait to see how this thing all goes down. A great pick all around from both sides. Check out those rosters. We'll be releasing them on our Twitter page as well. The all Dan K and all Lucas J team. Congratulations to all the NCDC guys who made the squad. Coach Kirkostas, we got to get ourselves a win, even if it's an imaginary game. And uh, Lucas, I think we should find some of the, one of these players from each team. Maybe if one of these guys want to reach out and tell us who's good at Chell, maybe we'll have the players play the game and you and I can do a, a – uh, a play-by-play -play broadcast so we can get it done. Dan K promising things too early before we can see if they can even work. But that's what I do. I put us on the spot. We're going to try to get it done. We thank you for watching. Lucas, before we close out, we thank the Florida Junior Blades. We thank everyone for watching the Dan K show this week. And I ask you for your parting words. That's it. He summed it up better than I can. Watch the Dan K show. We have the audio podcast now each and every Wednesday. That is the Dan K Show Presents Junior Hockey. Each and every Wednesday, Spotify, iTunes, anywhere, anywhere you find your podcast. Then each and every Thursday, tune in right here at youtube.com. If you found us, this is where you'll find us again. The Dan K Show each and every week. Next week, we'll have the all Dan K premiere team. You want to be a part of the show. You want to be a guest. You want to tell us we're wrong. You want to yell at us. You want to tell us we're the coolest people you've ever met or not met or e-met. You want to have a Zoom call and just chat about the game of hockey, reach out to us, www.dankshow.com, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at the underscore Dan K Show. When Dan K is on the mic, it's always hockey night. I need a nap. Oh, boy. We forgot to talk about our new things over quarantine. We, we were so running so low on time. I know, and there was a lot of stuff going on in the background over here. Because folks here, this is what happens when you go to Studio B. You get a B effort out of everyone. <laughs> I said, I need some time. Couldn't get it, unfortunately. You, you talk about having a, a talented crew behind you. They're talented, not necessarily the way you would have preferred in, in that 30-minute span. Exactly right. So we, we thank everyone for watching, and uh, here's, to, uh, here's to an off-season.